Time Blazers, we're racing against each other as we take a look at one of the most amazing inventions of all time, the bicycle. And believe me, the early bikes were a lot different. Ha! From before anyone invented brakes to some really strange sets of wheels, Whoa. this is the story of how your bike became what it is today. We're racing against the clock, then sometime off the road. All on this episode of Time Blazers. Oh, man! I always thought I was a normal kid. I mean, I did normal things, right? But then Sam and Jen appeared. Did you see that? They came out of nowhere. Suddenly, they were appearing all over the place. And now they take me back in time to find out what life in the past was really like. happened that's ruined my entire life. Can't see my friends. I can't go to the store, and if I don't get to school on time, I'll flunk out, and then I'll be in a lot of trouble. I'm telling you, this is a really serious problem. Sounds like you need two good friends ready to snap into emergency response mode. Jen, you ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right, where's the battle? Battle? What are you talking about? This isn't about battles. It's about... See? It's totally wrecked. This is your problem? Your bike? Gee, I don't know, Alex. I thought it was gonna be something serious. Serious? You don't think this is serious? For a kid, his bike's the only thing he's got. Can't do anything without a bike, unfortunately. I think it's had it. I don't know about that, Alex. I mean, in the story of bikes, you'd be surprised how effective old bikes have been. Oh, come on, Jen. That may be true for some things, but not for bikes. Everyone knows modern bikes work a lot better than the old ones. And by modern, you mean this. Whoa! Totally awesome. And by old bikes, you mean this. Whoa, wicked. What do you say we conduct a little test? Hey, Sam, old against new. We'll race across the valley. I'm there. Too bad you don't stand a chance, Jen. Well, that sounds like a challenge. A challenge? It's a fact. How about the loser has to buy everyone else ice cream? Everyone else, Alex? Nice. But I'm not worried. Even on this old bike, I'm still going to win. Now. Ready, set, ah! go. You know, I never thought of this before, but I wonder where bikes came from. Well, we were just waiting for you to ask. To find out, let's go all the way back to the Renaissance, which was from about 1400 to 1600. It was the time of Columbus and Shakespeare, when there were huge advances in the arts and sciences. And one of the greatest minds of the time was... Leonardo da Vinci. Hey! A great artist, a great scientist, and a man most people thought was the original inventor of the bike. But unfortunately... Unfortunately what, huh? There's no unfortunately. What's unfortunate? See, it's all about this uh, sketch that Leonardo supposedly drew back in 1493. Yep, that looks like one of mine. So it does not prove that I'm the inventor of the first bicycle, huh? Unfortunately not. Ooh. It turns out it was drawn with graphite pencil lead. Did I invent that too? Mm, no, it was invented many years after you died. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. So while folks thought for years you invented the bike, most scholars now say that probably you did. Well, I think you'd better hurry up if you want to catch up to Jen. Hey, check out where I am. 
I'm already way ahead of her. Hey, Sam, I'd be careful. You don't seem too steady there. Boss, oh, come on. I'm, I'm an expert at... <laughs> yeah, right. Now, here's the real story on the bike. Most people credit the first bike to a German named Baron Karl von Dreyes. He created something called the Hobby Horse Bike around 1816. Hobby Horse? One thing's for certain, the world had never seen anything like it. Baron von Dreyes, what is it that is thingy das? This is not a thingy, this is a hobby horse. It's a way to move around the country much faster than walking. Faster than walking? Ha! Oh, nothing. Look, it's made out of pure wood. It's got a steering wheel. You can turn, and then you can go wherever you want to go. But how does it work? Well, that's what's special. But the person would fall off. Well, no, no. You just need a little bit of balance, and then you're good to go. See? Ha! <laughs> Just takes a, a little bit of practice. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Belle von Dress, I don't seem to be moving. Well, when you get up to speed, you'll be moving as fast as a horse. Really? Oh, yeah. You won't have to worry about feeding him or grooming him or, you know, cleaning up after him. Yeah. I could go all the way to Munich for ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, see a bell you can find on Betty, huh? Woo! Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, come back here. Come back here. But that thing didn't have pedals, so it's not really a bike. Well, maybe not to you, but in 1818, the hobby horse was a smash. And speaking of smashes, I wonder what happened to Sam. Ah! Oh! oh, man! Whew. That was rough. Okay. What the? Uh, okay. Ah! Uh, come on! Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, uh, ow! Okay. I may have had a little mishap. Oh, but I found a sweet shortcut. Oh, yeah, I can make up time. No problem. Here we go. I don't know about that, Sam. You lost a lot of time with that crash. Ooh. Ooh. Poor Sam. You know, if he paid just a little more attention to history, he would know how important pedals are. And in the story of the invention of the bike, they were a major step forward. It was in France that Pierre and Ernest Michaud, father and son, created the first bike pedals. The Michauds invented what they called the Velocipede, which means fast foot. It transmitted power to the front wheel by use of pedals. It worked a lot like a tricycle pedal does today. For every revolution of the pedal, the wheel turned once. This meant the bike could travel farther with less effort. I get it. But wouldn't that mean one turn of the pedals means only one turn of the wheel? And that was the problem. While that idea is really useful if you're five years old, it's not much good for anybody bigger. You pedal like mad and you don't get too far. That's not so great. Despite that, however, the Velocipede became so popular that by 1868, the Michaud family had a factory that churned out hundreds of these bikes a year. Another problem was that the Velocipede's frame weighed about 100 pounds. Compare that to a modern bike, which can weigh less than 15 pounds. 100 pounds? How am I supposed to control this thing? Look out! Ooh, that had to hurt. Now, the weight of the Velocipede wasn't its only problem. See, in those days, the streets weren't paved like ours are today. So, the ride wasn't too smooth. Especially considering the bike was solid iron, with wheels made of wood. No wonder the other name for the Velocipede was... The Bone Shaker! Hey, I wonder how Sam's doing. Oh, well, 
One thing's for sure. I'm just thanked by lucky stars that these modern bikes have such light frames. You know, otherwise, I think this trip would be taking a lot longer than it is. All right. Woo! Don't thank your lucky stars. Thank the Starly family in England. They're the ones who really put everything we've seen together and came up with what we today recognize as a bicycle. Now, James Starley was one of those folks infected by the invention bug in the 19th century. He knew how to fix just about anything, and in fact, invented very popular sewing machines. One day, however, the most incredible thing happened. What was it? An earthquake? A volcano? Nope, it was more earth-shaking than that. It was the Bone Shaker! His partner's nephew had just bought himself a bone shaker from France. intrigued by his nephew's new purchase, but also saw how its design might be improved to make it easier to ride. Soon he had a plan to make bikes lighter by making the frame of tubes instead of solid steel. He also made the handlebars turn more smoothly and easily. He used metal spokes so the bike could now hold more weight and balance a rider a lot better. All of these things led to a bicycle that captured the imagination of the world. And it was called the Penny Farthing. The ratio of the wheel sizes was exactly the same as two British coins of the day, the Penny and the Farthing. But while they could decide on the name, it wasn't clear who was going to test ride the bike, Starley or that nephew of his. Okay, so in order for the rider's legs to reach the wheel, he had to be high up, which meant the bike wasn't too stable, and it uh, didn't have any brakes. Well, luckily there was still that nephew. And even better, that nephew had some ideas of his own. This time, James and John invented a bike that changed everything, and it was called the Safety Bike. Safety Bike? What? I could use one of those right about now! Okay, so every kid knows how important a bike is, but whoever Ready? thinks where bikes came from... We've already figured out that it wasn't really invented by one person so much as a bunch of people pursuing the same goal. The way I see it, it was the Starley family in England who really created what looks like the bike we know today. Of course, Sam's problem is, he needs that safety bike that Starley's invented because it looks to me like he's in a lot of trouble. A safety bike? What's that? Well, the safety bike was a major advance in our story. Here it is. John Starley invented a gear that could make it possible for the pedals to turn at a different rate than the wheels. That meant the two wheels could be the same size. And so, the bike was a lot more stable. I get it. Now the cyclist could pedal the bike and cover more ground at a greater speed. And it was safer because it was much harder to fall off the bike. And there was another thing they invented. Brakes! I invented brakes! Uh... Actually, no, you didn't. But I uh, distinctly remember saying that I invented brakes. Nope. Some other Englishman came up with the idea of the caliper brake in 1876, but uh, I thought to put it on this new bike. Hmm. Got me a smart nephew. Now you're talking. <laughs> it's a good thing they invented brakes, because without brakes, the only way to stop is... Ah! Okay, okay, brakes are a great invention for stopping, but I gotta get going if I'm gonna catch up with Jen. <laughs> no kidding, you really gotta burn rubber. 
Except your tire looks a little flat. Oh man! Yeah. Better think fast. She's way ahead. Well, at least my tires are pneumatic. Otherwise, I'd never catch up. Pneumatic? I, I know what that means. It means the tires are... Well, y you know, they're like... They're... So, what does pneumatic mean, anyways? Pneumatic? Well, that means something that's filled with air. See, the air in our tires, it helps absorb the shocks from the rough roads. <laughs> that's why our bikes don't feel like the bone shaker did. <laughs> Now, we have a lot of people to thank for that, but most of all, Amanda Charles Goodyear. To meet him, we have to go back to around the year 1840. That's right around the time of the steam engine and a good 20 years before the American Civil War. Now, for most of his neighbors, Charlie Goodyear might have seemed like kind of a strange guy. You think? After all, he spent year after year after year trying to make something most people thought was impossible. Rubber that wouldn't melt in the heat or crack in the winter. Oh yeah, it's very hard to run with sneakers that melt. No kidding. These experiments left Goodyear penniless until one day, an accident happened. Oh, yeah. He spilled some of his rubber mixture onto a stove, and the next thing he knew... What's that burning? It wasn't just rubber goo anymore. It was... Solid rubber? Vulcanized rubber. What's that? It's what you just invented, Chuck. It lasts in the cold and it's waterproof. Now this is gonna work for all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Woo! Including bike tires. Like most inventions, we got a lot of people to thank for the fact that we can patch our tires, pump them up quickly, then be Jen in a race. You know, I think Jen might be right. After all, as far as I can tell, bikes really haven't changed that much in the last hundred years. You know. I'm really starting to think you're right. The bikes are lighter, the gears are more complicated, the clothes are snazzy, but it really hasn't changed all that much. Except Sam's leaving out a crucial part of the bike story. Like how it changed the world. Changed the world? Absolutely. Well, look at it this way. Back in the 1800s, most people didn't stray too far from home. Cars hadn't been invented yet. And the only way of traveling, other than walking or taking a train, was with a horse and buggy. And that wasn't a lot of fun. But when the safety bike came around, everything changed. Jen's right. The bike gave you the freedom to go pretty much wherever you want, whenever you want. And there's another side to this story. Most of the people who rode bikes in the early days were men. They were the bike's first designers and riders. But once the safety bike was invented, check out what happened. Check it out. Now women are riding bikes, too. That's right. And from there, the bike industry took off. Here's another amazing thing about the bike. It seems that a lot of the world's great inventions were created by people who worked on bikes. Before the Wright brothers invented the world's first airplane, they fixed bikes for a living. As a matter of fact, their first passion was their bike business, and they did everything they could to build better and better bikes, and in doing so became expert mechanics and engineers. This, they set out to build the world's first airplane. And Henry Ford, yep, that Ford, also started off working on bikes. 
Later, he used a lot of what he learned to develop the tires, gears, and brakes on the world's first mass-produced cars. Wow, you look at it that way, it's amazing. I had no idea that bikes made such a big difference. Oh, they even meant more than what Sam's talking about. For instance, take a look. I don't get it. What am I looking at? Women's clothes as they appeared in the 1800s. You can see that whatever we look like, we sure weren't able to move around a lot. No kidding. Once bikes came into the picture, though. Hey, now she's wearing pants instead of a dress. That's right. It's no wonder that in the United States alone, almost one million women bought and rode bicycles in the decade of the 1890s. Not only did it mean that they could get out of some of those awkward clothes, they could get out of the house. Man, I had no idea how important the bicycle's been, in all sorts of ways. Look out, here comes Sam. Out of my way, Sammy. That ice cream's mine. As if. Oh yeah, it's totally mine. Look out! Look out! Hey, guys! Look out! You're gonna crash! Oh, I can't believe it! I thought for sure I'd win. Well, I thought for sure you would be way behind me. Huh. Well, I guess the old and the new work in perfect sync with one another. Hmm. Wow, this has been amazing. Because when you come right down to it, no one person invented the bike. I mean, you could say Baron Von Drees invented the bike, but it doesn't seem to me that a bike without pedals is really a bike at all. And there's no question that the Starleys were big for adding stuff like better wheels and pedals. But you can't say that Penny Farthing was all that practical. So they made the safety bike, which is pretty close to the modern bike. But it still didn't have cool stuff like gear shifters and handbrakes. All the stuff we consider part of a modern bike. Nope. Put it together and all you can say is the bike is an invention that came from lots of different people all over the world. And when you think about it, that makes sense, because it's the best mode of transportation, one that everyone can enjoy. DVD or video of this program, call 1-800-876-2447 or visit our website at www.chiptaylor.com.